So hey guys, this is your favorite the fanfic club, so in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was fall in love with red haired girl? But before we start, remember to subscribe and like this video, now let's start. A new friend, 8 year old Naruto was sitting in the rain crying as he stared at his apartment, it was on fire, why does this always happen to me, he asked quietly. Just the week before he had been beaten up for no reason and now his apartment had been set on fire, he knew this hadn't been his fault, he may be rash but he was never careless, he had made sure to turn off anything that would cause a fire. No this was caused by a jutsu, he stood up slowly with his head down, I guess I should go find a dry place to stay, in the morning I will go to the old man and get him to fix it again, he sighed. Suddenly he looked up, what was that, he had heard a sound, it was small and most people would pass it off as nothing, but this was Naruto, he had been beaten up and mistreated ever since he was three years old, after all those times, he had grown very accurate senses, he could smell danger, sense of all sorts of things, and he could hear an incredibly far distance. Not only that, he had a sort of sixth sense, he once avoided death from a kanai because he had felt it coming before he actually noticed it, these new senses had helped a lot in his young life. He sighed in frustration as he spun around to find nothing there, every time he heard or saw something out of the corner of his eye, he couldn't find it when he looked, he knew something was there, it could avoid his five senses but couldn't avoid his sixth sense, it was too close for him not to feel it close by, but it moved so fast, he sniffed, but any smell that his pursuer gave off was covered by smoke and the rain. The blonde haired boy heard something that sounded like a giggle, this person was playing with him, this made Naruto angry, he was used to people ignoring him or beating him up, but playing with him, he gave a low growl and looked up. Hey you, he yelled to whoever was following him, I am tired of this, stop being so mean, he slumped to the ground and began to cry again. He felt a pressure on his shoulder and looked up to see a red-headed girl about his age, who who are you, he asked, she gave a soft smile and hugged him, I am sorry I was messing with you, I thought you didn't mind. The boy blinked, this little eight-year-old girl had been the one following him around and evading his senses, that was impossible, she would have had to be a better ninja than the ones of the village, even they couldn't hide from him for very long, he was even more surprised by her hug, no one had ever hugged him before. All he could do was sit there and let the girl hold him, after a little while she let go of him and took his hand, come on, I know a place you can stay until your place is fixed. Naruto nodded and let her lead him, he didn't know why but he trusted her, they soon ended up in an old shack, the floor was piled. With hay, she smiled and plopped down on the hay and looked at him, sit down, she said and patted next to her. He sighed and sat next to her, why are you doing this, he asked quietly, won't your parents get mad you are around me? She giggled and shook her head, no, I don't have any parents, she said catching the blonde by surprise. Oh, I am sorry, he said softly, don't be, she said smiling, I didn't know them, they left me alone a week after I was born. Naruto blinked and shook his head, okay, he said, um, what is your name? Her smile faltered as she thought, well, you can call me, Q, she said and her smile returned, my name is Q. He gave her a bright smile, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, he said, and I am going to be the Hokage, once I get ninja training. Q nodded, that is a good dream, she said, what is your dream, Naruto asked. My dream, she said, well I guess it would be to get a cute blonde haired boy to like me and be my boyfriend, her face had turned a little red. Naruto was thoughtful, do I know him, he asked dumbly, or maybe I have seen him? She gave a laugh, no silly, she said, I am talking about you. Now it was his turn to become red, and me, he asked looking into her eyes for the first time, he noticed that she had ruby red eyes. Yep, she said happily, you, Naruto sat there for a few seconds and then fainted. Q shook her head, boys, she said and curled up against him, I am sorry you had a bad life Naruto, she said quietly as she closed her eyes, I am sorry of the problems I have caused you, her hand trailed under his shirt and onto his stomach to look at the small scar on it, because of this I am able to talk to you and be with you, she giggled, geez, I can't believe my human body has returned to its young form. She sighed and rubbed against him, I guess I am destined to age with you, she frowned, 
I guess one day I am going to have to tell you who I am. Q smiled softly, but for now, she said, I am happy to be your friend, and maybe more later, she slowly fell asleep. Four years later, amazing, Q said happily smiling as Naruto fitted his headband onto his head. He turned and smiled at her. I know, and I am not even in that much trouble for stealing that scroll. Q smiled as she tied her own headband around her neck, and right after I got my own, she said smiling, do you think we will be put on the same team? She asked, he hugged her tightly, I sure hope. So, he said, I would hate to be anywhere without my best friend. She blushed and hugged him back, thanks Naruto, she said softly, now come on, let's get to class and learn who our sensei will be, she tugged on his hand. He laughed and followed her, when they got to class and took their seats, Uruka smiled, alright everyone it is time to assign you to your teams, he smiled, alright. Team 7 is Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, at this Naruto gave a cry of joy while Sakura put her head down in sadness, Sasuke Uchiha, this time it was Sakura's cry of joy and Naruto put his head down in sadness, but Q was there and patted his head, it is okay Naruto-kun, she whispered earning a smile from him, and, Ruka said stretching the word, annoyed at being interrupted, Q UBI. This time both Naruto and Q jumped up with cries of joy and hugging each other. Naruto smiled brightly. This is great, my best friend and the girl I like all in one team. He turned to address his newest team members. This ended up with Naruto close to Sasuke. Another student accidentally hit Naruto and he fell forward. Hey Naruto, Q had moved in front of him to talk to him when he fell forward. Dot and their lips met. Q shot back across the room. Blushing furiously, oh my god, oh my god, Naruto and I kissed, she blinked, why the hell am I acting like a love-struck teenager, and then she remembered, I am a love-struck teenager, well almost. Teenager, Naruto was blushing too, her lips felt nice, he thought smiling softly, then shook his head as Sakura hit him over the head, Naruto. She yelled, how dare you take advantage of a girl like that, what if that had been her first kiss? she said thinking it might have not been. Q was a very attractive girl with her wild red hair, ruby red eyes, and full lips. Though she only had started to develop in the chest area, WHCH annoyed Q greatly, though they didn't know that, she still proved to make most of the boys drool. Naruto rubbed his head as Q stopped Sakura from hitting him again. It is okay Sakura-san, I don't mind, she gave a small smile, Naruto isn't that bad of a kisser, this statement caused said boy to blush even more, thank you Q-chan, he said. She smiled and sat next to him to wait for their sensei. A couple of hours later they were still sitting there and Naruto growled in frustration, geez, this guy is late, everyone else's senseis showed up and picked them up at the right time, he grinned as he lifted an eraser and put it in the door, well when he does show up then he will get a big surprise. Sorry I am late I, a white-haired man opened the door and the eraser fell onto his head, he looked around and saw a red-haired girl and a blonde laughing. My first impression of you, he said, is that I don't like you. This caused the two to frown. Now meet me on the roof, he vanished. Naruto's face turned red with anger. What the hell was that? He asked. He comes in late and then goes off. He sighed. Come on Q-chan. She smiled and followed him out. When they were on the roof, they learned about each other, all they learned about their sensei was that his name was Kakashi Hitaki. He noticed that Q hadn't spoken. And who are you? He asked, intrigued that there were four team members while there was usually only three. He had been informed that there was a odd number of students in the class and he just happened to get the pleasure of one more student. Oh, um my name is Qubi, she said, my hobbies are hanging out with Naruto, playing games of hide and seek and practicing my ninja skills, she smiled, my favorite foods are ramen, sushi, vanilla ice cream, and pickles, she was thoughtful, my goal is to, she paused, you know what, I don't want to tell you my goal, Naruto was blushing, he remembered when she had told him her goal when they were eight, Kakashi nodded, all right, he said, meet me at training ground seven, tomorrow morning, he closed his only visible eye in a smile, and don't eat anything, you will just throw it all up, he turned and vanished, leaving the four looking like they would throw up right there. 
Naruto shook his head and looked at everyone else, Q and I are going to go train, he said, we will see you tomorrow, he waved and jumped away as Q followed him. So Naruto what are we going to train, she asked following him, I am going to teach you how to preform the cage bushin no jutsu, he said smiling. She grinned, great, she said, not going to tell him that she already knew it, along with a large range of other jutsu, and you can teach me a couple of those fire jutsu, he said. The red-haired girl smiled, the grand fireball and the phoenix flower jutsu, she asked. That would be great, her blonde crush said smiling. She blushed as they landed in the training ground, okay, he said place your hands just like this, he showed her the seal, she purposely messed it up, like. This, she asked. No, he said coming behind her and placing his hands on hers and moving them into the right seal. Like this, he said holding her hands, now focus your chakra into the seal and make a clone. She nodded, cage bushin no jutsu, she called out causing five clones to be created. Naruto smiled and created his own clones. Let's see which of our clones are better, he said as she grinned and they began to train. Clones vanished and reappeared as they trained, both appeared to have equal amount of chakra. Naruto smiled, this is amazing, he thought as he dodged a kanai, I am learning a lot about my own fighting style, I know my own faults and can improve upon it. By the time they were done, the sun was going down. Q smiled as Naruto finished off the rest of her clones and walked up to her. It was a tie, they both said and began to laugh. Okay Naruto, she said grinning darkly, you still have to do your training, she laughed at the look on his face, ah, he said, I don't want to do any mind training, he complained. She stuck her tongue out, no friend of mine is going to have brawn without brains, she said, now come on let's get home and I will make you my homemade ramen, she giggled as his face lit up and he grabbed her to run back to his apartment. Q shook her head as she cooked while Naruto worked on his mind, she didn't want him to be a big dumb fighter, she preferred a balance of mental and physical training. Q, Naruto said, are you sure gaining knowledge will help me be a ninja? He asked again, yes Naruto, she said, if you have a lot of knowledge then it helps you learn jutsu easier, she shook her head as he grinned and went back to reading. What do I see in him? She asked herself as she looked over at him, oh yeah, she admired him muscular, bright blue eyes, wild sun-kissed blonde hair, soft lips that felt so good on her own. She shivered and shook her head, she may have had the body of a little girl, but she had the desires of a woman. I will have you one day Naruto, she thought as she brought a bowl of ramen over to her and set it down. Break time, she said smiling. Yes, Naruto said as he set the books aside and began to eat with her, he was slower and more controlled than when he was younger. Q smiled. You have gotten good with you manners, she said, I am happy. He smiled and swallowed, thank you Q-chan, he said, she smiled at him and yawned as she finished eating, I am tired Naruto-kun, she said. Naruto blushed, this was the awkward part, they slept together but Q always ended up snuggled up to him, she claimed it was an accident and Naruto believed her. We will go to bed once I finish this bowl, he said hearing her clap and run off to take a shower. She is going to put on that small nightgown again, he said with a bigger blush. Soon he was done and he could hear Q go into his room, I will be in there after I take a shower, he said, okay, he heard called back, he grabbed a pair of boxers and went to take a shower. When he walked into the room, he felt blood run from his nose, again, Q was sitting on his bed wearing a small pink nightgown. He was so caught up in watching her that he didn't notice the bead of blood that ran from her nose as she checked him out. He gave a nervous cough as he walked over to sit on his side of the bed, um, gee good night Q-chan. Why yeah, she replied crawling under the blankets, good night Naruto-kun. Mists and power. Naruto opened his eyes and was rewarded with a pile of red hair in his face, she did it again he thought and slowly slid away from her to get up and get dressed. According to Q, his normal wardrobe wasn't normal so he put on a dark red shirt with a black vest that had a few pockets for hidden items. He then slipped on a pair of black pants that were tight around the waist and got a little looser as they moved down the legs. Lastly he pulled on a pair of black shoes. He decided that these were definitely more comfortable than his sandals. He did a few stretches and ran his fingers through his hair to pull out any knots. 
Wow, you look handsome, he heard from the hallway and turned to see Q standing there. You bought them for me, he said. She smiled and moved to get dressed, I know, and you look a whole lot better, he heard from his room. The blonde shook his head and looked at the clock. It is almost time to go, he called making some instant ramen. He grinned as he ate when he heard her yell at him for rushing. Oh come on, you will look beautiful no matter what you do, he said and smiled when she became quiet. She soon came out wearing black pants like Naruto, a black shirt, and a pair of black shoes. I don't need more than this, she said smiling. He laughed as he finished eating. They walked out and headed to the training ground. They both almost broke out laughing when they saw Sakura's reaction to the way Naruto was dressed. Um, uh, Naruto, she said staring at him, you look, good, Sakura blinked as she complimented the most annoying boy she had known. Naruto smiled, thank you Sakura-chan, he said as he and Q stood next to them and waited for their sensei. As they all had expected, Kakashi was late and made up some weird, stupid excuse about why he was late. Even though he didn't show it, Kakashi was surprised at the way Naruto was dressed, alright I am going to give you a test, he started. As Kakashi explained the test, Naruto and Q talked. Okay Naruto-kun, it seems that we need to get the bells, Naruto nodded, and from what he has said, he wants us to come at him one at a time, but that is wrong, he actually wants us to work together. Q smiled and was a little amazed that Naruto had figured it out. Great job, she said, see those mental training times help, Naruto blushed, okay, so Cage Bushin, he asked, she nodded, sounds. Good, and that is pretty much it. Kakashi said pulling his favorite book out, start. Naruto and Q both preformed a seal. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, they called. Kakashi watched them, two clones of Naruto and four clones of Q, hmm, interesting strategy. He blocked and dispersed the first two clones. His eye widened as he heard three shouts, one above him, one behind him and one next to him, fire style, phoenix flower Jutsu. A barrage of fire came at him and he moved forward out of the way. Naruto appeared in front of him and swung a kick at him, good form, Kakashi thought as he knocked Naruto aside in a poof of smoke. The real Naruto and Q were hidden, I am glad we didn't put our weights on, Naruto whispered to his red-haired friend who nodded in turn, and he is still way faster than us, she whispered back. Naruto saw Kakashi vanished and saw a bell laying on the ground, Q he said watching it and saw her nod out of the corner of his eye. He made a new clone and told it to run and try to pick up the bell. Just as they expected, the Naruto clone was pulled off his feet and hung above the ground. The blonde boy nodded to his friend and they jumped toward Kakashi going through hand seals, fire style, grand fireball jutsu. They both breathed giant fireballs from opposite sides of Kakashi. Naruto grinned as they made contact but frowned when the smoke cleared and revealed a bunch of charred logs. Damn, Kawarimi, he said pissed. Q walked over, I don't sense him, she said and Naruto nodded and they ran off to look for him. Later as the sun went down Kakshi appeared at the training ground holding a tied up Sakura, time's up, he said. Then he explained the value of teamwork, threatened to kill Sasuke if Naruto and Q didn't kill Sakura then left them with lunch, which all three offered to Sakura and ended up passing the test. Naruto cracked his neck, well that was anticlimactic, he said earning a nod from his teammates. Then went home to get some sleep, they had missions the next day. Q smiled as she listened to Naruto talk about how happy he was to get a mission that involved leaving the village as they got ready, I'll bet we will get to see all sorts of places and people, maybe we will meet some strong ninja, he was bouncing around as he got his stuff. Q laughed, calm down Naruto, it is just a sea mission, she said, we are just escorting an old guy to his village so he can finish a bridge, Naruto smiled, I know, but we get to leave the village and see other places. Q giggled as they finished and went out to meet their team, let's go, Naruto said as they walked out. As they walked, Naruto and Q noticed something and pulled together, it hasn't rained lately, Naruto said, and yet there is a puddle, Q nodded, it doesn't make sense, let's wait and see what Kakashi does. Kakashi stopped and was sliced into pieces, only to reveal logs as the red-haired girl and the blonde-haired boy sprung into action, quickly rounding on the two ninjas that had attacked them. 
They soon had the two tied in their own chains and tied to a tree. Good job, you two, Kakashi said appearing. He had been waiting to see how his new pupils had reacted and would have jumped in before they could be seriously hurt. Naruto grinned as Q nodded, just dumb luck, they heard from behind them. Naruto turned and rounded on the boy, what did you say Sasuke Tem? He said getting in Sasuke's face. The Uchiha pushed him away, I said it was just dumb luck, Dobi, he said grinning. Naruto huffed and turned away, stuck up ass, he mumbled. Q giggled and hugged him. You were great Naruto, she said earning a smile for her trouble. When they got closer, a man with a rather large sword landed on the tree in front of them. They watched as Kakashi activated his Sharingan and they began to fight. Wow, Naruto said watching them, look at them go. He was already getting ready to fight. He and Q were about to jump in when Zabuza was struck by two Senban needles. The blonde watched as a person stepped out and thanked them for helping her catch Sabuza before vanishing. Then Kakashi fainted, well this has been interesting, that person didn't even tell us their name, Naruto said as he and Q lifted. Kakashi and carried him. Later when Kakashi was better, he taught Naruto and Sasuke how to use their chakra to walk up trees and left them to do it. Q stayed behind to watch Naruto. She giggled when they both fell down. It soon got dark and both boys were still going at it. While Sasuke left to get some rest Naruto stayed and continued to try to reach the top of the tree. You can go get some sleep Q. Chan, he said seeing her eyes droop. She nodded and thanked him before leaving, she didn't sleep well. Naruto met Haku the next morning and learned a little about her. Soon Zabuza showed up at the bridge and Naruto arrived a few minutes early and in a stroke of idiocy snuck into Haku's ice jutsu to help Sasuke. Q had been told to stay with Tazuna and Sakura to help protect them. She felt it when Naruto tapped into her power but was even more surprised when she felt another power with it. The blonde's hair had grown wild as he stood up and showed off his glowing red slitted eyes. He felt the power flow into him and doubled over in pain as he felt his eyes start to hurt. Black lines and spirals grew from the pupils and down the side of his face. The lines went out and began to circle and pull back into his eyes, turning them black, pupil and all. Then a red pupil the same as a fox's formed. This one was all red smack dab in the middle of the black of his eyes. He noticed that Haku moved slowly, jumping from one mirror to the other. He ran forward, seeing that everything was in slow motion for him. Incredible, he thought dodging Senban needles and grabbed Haku by the arm and then punching her out through a mirror. He landed in front of her, he stared at her and saw something, I can see all of her weak points he looked around, I can see my own chakra flowing out, I am letting so much out, he pulled it in so that it only flowed around his skin, I feel better, stronger, he turned back to Haku and was so surprised by what he saw he returned to normal, he could easily remember where her weak spots were. Kill me Naruto, she said and they talked before she vanished to save Zabuza. He soon met Q, Sakura, and Tazuna as Sakura came to check on Sasuke. Q hugged Naruto. Are you okay? She asked worried. He nodded, I am fine, actually I feel great, he said. She smiled, good. They watched as Zabuza killed all of the enemies. Wow, no wonder they call him the demon of the mists. Q said. Naruto nodded as they all watched Zabuza die right next to Haku. I think we should bury them, he said. They agreed with him. They soon left and the bridge was named. A few days later. Naruto sighed as he flopped onto his bed. Geez that was exciting. Q sat laid down. Yeah, she said fake yawning. I am going to sleep. She shut her eyes waiting for Naruto to go to sleep. Instead, once he thought she was asleep he stood up and walked into the Bathroom and taking off his shirt, he focused chakra into his eyes and felt them change, what the, he said quietly, seeing a seal on his stomach, it had no weak spots except for a small cut on the bottom of his stomach. He saw a red line leading away from the cut and back into his room, he followed it and gasped at what he saw. Q was still pretending to sleep. What Naruto saw was a pair of large fox ears on her head and nine flowing tails, there were no weak spots on her body that could be used to kill, plenty of pleasure and tickle spots. Another thing he noticed was that he could see that she was faking sleep. Then a bunch of images flashed into his head, the Kayubi attacking the village, 
the fourth sealing him into a baby, himself as he got older, Q showing up out of the seal. Q, he said, I know you are awake, he watched her as she sat up and stared at him, Naruto-kun, she asked wondering how he had known and the fact that his eyes were black and slitted red. Q, he stopped, no, Kayubi-chan, why didn't you tell me who you were? He watched as fear crossed her face and tears formed, I am sorry Naruto, she said as his eyes returned to normal and he couldn't see past her human guise, I didn't mean to make your life. Terrible, she cried, please don't hate me, Naruto took her into his arms, I don't hate you Q-chan, he said quietly, I am upset that you hadn't told me sooner, but that is all, she looked up and couldn't help it, she leaned up and fully kissed him on the lips. The blonde was surprised but only for a second before he kissed her back, when they broke apart he pulled her under the blankets to his chest and let her fall asleep there, I think I am now dating the most powerful demon alive, he mumbled before falling asleep. Enemies and allies, so Q-chan, a concentrating Naruto said, if I concentrate then I can use your chakra at will, he had pinned it down to just the basic concept, while in actuality he needed to focus and draw the chakra from the sleeping fox form that lay inside him. His red-haired girlfriend shook her head, that is the basic part, she said and smiled, we will do this later, she bit her thumb and went through a series of hand seals before slamming her hand down onto the ground, summoning jutsu, she said as smoke appeared in front of her. Naruto was amazed at what had appeared in front of them. A small black fox with a scroll around its neck hanging by a chain. Q smiled, hello Naito Fakusu, she said quietly. The fox looked up at her, oh, Kayubi-sama, he said bowing low, how may I help you? The female demon shook her head, call me Q here, she said, and I would like to give the summoning contract to Naruto too. Sighed, she giggled and clapped her hands. He is my boyfriend, she stopped and blushed. The blonde boy blushed, summoning contract, he asked. Naito Fakusu turned to him, yes, it is the contract that allows you to summon foxes, he said dropping the scroll in front of Naruto. His red-haired vixen walked up, now Naruto-kun, you need to write your name, in blood, under my name, she smiled, I created the contract so I am allowed to let you use it. Naruto nodded and bit his thumb before writing his name. The dark fox nodded and the scroll snapped up. That is all there is to it, he said. Now you can summon all types of foxes, from big ones to small ones. He seemed to think before speaking again, except for the Kayubi, she can't be summoned as she is sealed within you. The Kayubi container nodded. What types of foxes are there, he asked. Q smiled, well there are a family of foxes for each. Element, she gave a small laugh, and for every side element too. She switched into lecture mode, the highest ranking foxes are the fire foxes, she grinned, being me and only me, as I have yet to pick a heir or a mate, though that one is quickly being filled, she looked pointedly at Naruto and he blushed. Next you have the water foxes, they can manipulate any type of water and are very useful in dry climates, she walked around the two. Then come the wind foxes, they control any type of air, some can even suck the air right out of an area and make a vacuum, she grinned. Last but not least there are the earth foxes, they can create earthquakes or move any type of earth, sand, marble, diamond. Naruto smiled at all of this new information, what about the side? Elements, he asked. Q smiled, he was very curious all the time now. Well you have them too, she said, the lightning foxes, the dark foxes, both who are great messengers as they can travel to places. Either hidden or quickly, she watched as Naruto ate this up, ice foxes branched off from water foxes, they specialize in cooling things and can cause great winters. She hugged him and snuggled close, you also have the special foxes, they specialize in bloodlines, but they are stubborn and you won't be able to summon them until you are fully able to control my power. Naruto nodded as he held her. The black fox smiled and poofed away back to wherever all summons come from. Q grinned and leaned up to kiss Naruto. The blonde boy smiled and kissed back, their lips trailing together, their tongues touching at times. They were both beginning to enjoy it when Naruto remembered something. Aren't we supposed to be meeting Kakashi Sensei in a few minutes? He asked. Q groaned, Oh, but I was enjoying the kiss. You are such a good kisser for an inexperienced young man. 
The blonde blushed, why yeah, he said, it is easy to learn, he stood up with her and they both headed off toward the training grounds. They were surprised to find Kakashi already there. What is up Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked, I am glad you asked. Naruto, Kakashi began to address the entire team. In two weeks the Chunin exams will begin. He gave an eye smile. This exam will test your attributes as a ninja of the Leaf Village. You will be pitted against your fellow Leaf Nin and ninjas from the other villages. He saw Naruto grin and knew he would come to the test. Now if you feel that you aren't ready then don't show up at the testing center on the day of the first exam, you won't be judged and will be allowed to take it again next year. He watched them all, he saw stubbornness in both Sasuke's face, in Sakura's he saw fear and doubt, and in Kyu's and Naruto's he saw excitement. He turned away, I hope to see you all in two weeks, train well, he waved and vanished in a poof of smoke. Naruto and Kyu smiled, let's go train, Kyu said taking his hand and leading him away, okay Kyu chan he said knowing that he needed to work on his new bloodline and to learn how to summon. On their way home the herd Konohamaru calling for help, they quickly rushed over to see a boy with a painted face and all black clothing holding the young boy by the scarf. Naruto noticed that he had a large wrap on his back and, by using his bloodline, could see that the boy was actually a puppet and the real one was in the wrap. Let Konohamaru go, he called, the boy looked at him and threw Konohamaru at him. Naruto rushed forward and caught him, thanks Naruto, he said as Naruto set him down, hey what is your problem, picking on a defenseless kid. The boy turned away, get lost punk, he said and began to walk away, a rock hit him in the back of the head, Naruto looked up and saw Sasuke standing on the branch of a tree, what the? He turned around and gripped his wrap, alright, you guys are making me mad, he pulled the wrap down and it hit the ground, Naruto saw, with his bloodline that he had switched with the puppet, I didn't even notice him do it, Naruto thought. My name is Konkuro, he said, prepare to get your asses kicked, Naruto saw that the girl was getting ready to fight too, he then felt a strange presence, Konkuro, Tamari, a red-headed boy with the kanji for love on his forehead said, no fighting here, he vanished in a swirl of sand and reappeared in between Konkuro and Tamari and looked at Naruto. Naruto, a voice said in his head, um yes, he asked, it is me Q? The voice was deep and threatening, nothing like Q's, how are you doing this, he asked. She gave a small laugh, I am still sealed inside of you, she said, but I need to talk to you about. That boy, it seems as though he has my sister sealed inside of him, but she is in pain and has lost her mind to something I can't identify. The blonde observed the boy, with those rings around his eyes he looked like a panda, or maybe a raccoon, your sister, he asked, the one-tailed biju, Shukaku. How can we help, he thought, the seal used to hold her is horrible, Naruto confirmed it by looking at the boy's seal with his bloodline, it had many faults and twists, it could hold a demon as long as the container stayed awake. Can you fix it, the geek demon laughed. I may not know how to break a seal created to hold demons but I can fix it, we must do it from the inside out, see if you can get the boy alone, the best time would be during the Chunin exams, it will give me time to teach you the seals and jutsu you need to know. Naruto looked at him, what is your name, he asked and got the answer, my name is Gara of the Sand, he said, who are you, Naruto smiled, I am Naruto Uzumaki and I am going to be the next Hokage, he said. Gara turned away, don't die and that may happen, he said, though it is very unlikely, he and his siblings vanished. Naruto shook his head and turned to Q. Let's get started, he said getting a nod from his girlfriend. Over the next two weeks Naruto learned how to summon foxes, and put them to good use, he found that if he summoned both a water and earth fox then he could combine their abilities and create wood. This was useful when Naruto created an obstacle course for him and Q to use during their training. He also learned how to use seals, and learned many jutsu. He learned at least five jutsu of every element, side and main. He soon learned that he had a knack for genjutsu and ninjutsu, so in order to balance out himself he trained his taijutsu. When he reached his limit he had Lee teach him, they had met one day when Naruto was training himself extensively and became great friends quickly. They would spar and train together. Lee was amazed at how many weights Naruto could hold, and soon enough was wearing the same amount as himself. 
This was thanks to Naruto's quick healing factor, as his muscles tore, they healed almost just as fast, making his training faster. They learned a lot from each other, they were both orphans, Naruto's inability to learn jutsu because of the lack of knowledge and Lee's inability because of some problem with his chakra coils. Naruto learned a lot about Lee's team members. Ten Ten the weapons user was excellent in her profession and was pretty on top of having a great personality. Neji was a Hyuga and therefore had the ability to see almost 360 degrees, and could even see through objects. This allowed him to see your chakra points and stop the chakra flow so you couldn't preform any jutsu. Naruto pointed out to Lee, that because he couldn't mold chakra, Neji's attack only worked half as good as it should have. This brightened the green spandex wearing boy and they began to train again. As he got better he also learned about chakra control and could now preform his jutsu with ten times as much ease than he could have before. Now he could create twice as many shadow clones at half the cost of chakra it normally took from him, allowing him to give his clones more chakra to use for jutsu. The blonde Jinchuriki also had the time to come up with a name for his bloodline, he called it the Kyushobor Ka for its ability to break through secrets. By using this he was also able to learn many seals from Q and even create his own. He created one that, when applied, would pull a person toward the receiving seal, no matter where they were. After a few tests, and a lot of pains, he had finally made it where the seal wouldn't try to pull someone through an obstacle and would avoid anything that didn't have his seal on it. Naruto went flying through the air toward the opposite side of his home, but before he hit the wall with the glowing seal on it he stopped and returned the opposite direction. He continued to bounce back and forth between the two seals before, with one hand seal, he deleted them. Nice job Naruto-kun, Q said, you have gotten so good that you can project your seal onto something instead of drawing it? Naruto nodded. That is because it is a small seal and is easy to project, he said the bigger ones still have to be drawn. She smiled and sighed, today is the day of the first Chunin exam, she said, Naruto smiled, I guess the best thing to do would be to make a clone of myself and get Gara to do the same, he asked. Q shrugged, how do you know he will go along with it? Her blonde boyfriend laughed, he looks like he hasn't slept in years, if a chance showed up like the one I am going to give then why wouldn't he take it? Q shook her head and pointed at him from the window, there is Gara. let's get him while he is alone, they both ran off after the red-headed Jinchuriki. Gara, Naruto called, wait up, he smiled when Gara stopped. His frown disappeared when he saw the look he was getting, what do you want Uzumaki? Naruto shook his head and smiled again, we found out a way for you to be able to sleep, he said. Gara instantly had him pinned to the wall with his sand, do you plan to kill me? Many have tried, none have done it, the boy said with a cool indifference. Naruto shook his head. No, I mean we can help you. He nodded toward Q. She is the Kyubi, he said, and she knows your demon. She also knows how to fix your seal so you can sleep without her being free. Gara seemed to think about this and Naruto pushed him a little. What do you have to lose? If I am tricking you then you can just kill me. He smiled. And if not then you can sleep at our apartment and be our friend. The sand moved away. Fine Uzumaki, but if this doesn't work then you are dead, Q smiled and led the two boys back into the apartment, once there, Gara was instructed to remove his shirt and to lay on the floor. You'll need to remove your armor too, Naruto was amazed that Q had noticed it when he hadn't, I know my sister's abilities, she stated as she drew a seal on top of the one on Gara's stomach and made it trail from it down onto the floor and in a spiral pattern around the red-haired boy. Naruto nodded as a Gara clone, Q clone, and Naruto clone went to take the first exam for them. He moved into Postion at Gara's head and began to go through the hand seals while clones at other positions did the same. Q went through her own set of seals standing over Gara and as Naruto and his clones slammed their hands into the ground, she slammed hers into his stomach, causing the entire room to glow with intricate patterns and unreadable words. Sealing Jutsu Nine God Jutsu, Seal Repair, Inner Sanctum. They all called out as a blinding flash made Naruto close his eyes. He felt hot air against his face and sand under his feet, he opened his eyes and stared in amazement. He was in a desert that sreed out for as far as he could see, he turned around and saw Gara standing there, Uzumaki, he asked, where are we? 
The twelve-year-old ninja smiled, we are in your mind, the seal jutsu worked, he said and began to walk, followed by the sand ninja, not noticing the sand forming behind them. Q, Naruto called, Q, he frowned, where could she be? He sensed something and grabbed Gara and moved as a giant sand hand slammed into the spot where they had been standing. They looked up and saw what looked like a giant sand raccoon. Gara, Naruto said, we have to, he froze when he saw Gara, Gara, with a scared look on his face, Shukaku, the frightened boy said. What, Naruto said, that is Shukaku, he jumped out of the way of another attack. He quickly began forming hand seals, wind style, desert storm. The wind picked up and blew the giant sand raccoon to pieces. Through all the swirling sand he saw, in the middle of Shukaku's body, a small sphere holding what looked like a girl's body. Gara, he said, keep him busy, Naruto was sure that the creature he was fighting was male and something totally different than a raccoon demon. He created clones and began preforming hand seals while Gara did his best to fight. He moved the sand to block an attack and was surprised when it moved away and he got hit. A clone caught him and was destroyed as the sand pummeled him down. Gara, Naruto yelled as his new friend was buried. This is your mind, you have the power to fight. Back, there was a rumble as Gara came out of the sand with it forming around him. Uzumaki is right, he said as he got bigger and turned. Into a copy of Shukaku. This is my mind. A huge tidal wave of sand came down and slammed into Shukaku, knocking the creature back. This time Naruto saw the sphere and the girl clearly. Gara, he called, grab that sphere. The sand wrapped around it and pulled it to the Gara, Shukaku lookalike, keep it with you. He slammed his hand into the ground as the clones did too. Sealing Jutsu, Nine God Jutsu, Seal Repair, Outer Sanctum. The ground shook as the sand moved and the sand Shukaku fell apart each time it tried to reform, it turned its cold eyes on Naruto, I will kill you, it roared as it moved along the ground toward him. No, I am sending you to hell, Naruto said moving through the second stage of the seal. Shinigami's Punishment, Gates of Hell Jutsu. The creature's eyes widened as it was pulled through a black hole that had appeared in the sky, it sucked the soul away and let the sand drop to the ground. Naruto smiled and turned to Gara, who was human again and was holding the girl. As he got closer he saw that she had sand-colored hair and little black rings around her closed eyes. He also noticed she had one ringed tail. Gara looked up at him, who is this, he asked. The blonde smiled, she is the real Shukaku, what we faced was the evil part, the corrupted seal created that monster and shut her off from everything. It took her name and title. He watched the redhead take this all in, so I can sleep, he asked. Naruto laughed, yes, he said, you can sleep, then he was kicked out of Gara's mind to open his eyes in his apartment. It went well, Q said smiling as she set Gara next to the sleeping girl, who he knew was Shukaku from the dark rings around her eyes. Yes it did, Naruto said smiling. Q giggled, it is nice to have my little Shuki back, Naruto chuckled. Shuki, he asked. His red-headed girl hit him lightly, it is my nickname for her, and she happens to like. It, her boyfriend laughed, okay okay, he said, so we have two new friends to add to our group, he stopped and blinked, and we passed the first Chunin exam, he smiled then looked at Shuki, she will have to wait. Until next year before she can try to become Chunin. She shrugged, she won't mind, when she wakes up she will just be happy to be awake, Naruto laughed again. How ironic, she has been asleep for 12 years and he has been awake for 12 years, they have a lot to talk about. She giggled, yep, now let's go out and get some ramen, Naruto leapt up and led her out to the ramen stand. They met up with their friends and they all went to eat. The first day of the Chunin exams had gone fairly well, Naruto got new friends, Gara finally got some sleep, and the newest member, Shuki, or better known as Shukaku is free to be with her sister and maybe find a love interest in her container as well. Naruto's new jutsu and Orochimaru's pain Naruto walked toward the forest of death with his new friends and Q, Gara, Shuki, and strangely Tamari and Konkuro. Naruto just thought they were scared of their brother because he was letting more people around him, and earlier that morning when they found him, he had a girl hugging him. Then they got hugged, scared them silly. 
Flashback Naruto yawned as he sat up, carefully moving Q off of him. He walked into the living room to find two pairs of eyes staring at him, ah, he said jumping a little, Gara and Shuki, you guys are up. Already, Gara shrugged, I woke up and this girl was laying on me, Shuki blushed and looked away. The blonde laughed, yeah, those demons can cuddle up to you in their sleep if you are not careful, he smiled, but it is not all that bad. It is actually quite comfortable, the redhead shook his head, I never said I didn't enjoy it, just a little surprised is all, he said, I have never had a girl lay anywhere near. Me, his new friend nodded, until I was eight I never knew it, he said, and then Q showed up. Shuki looked at Gara. can I hug you, she asked in a small voice. The boy looked at Naruto with a question, sign of affection between friends or family, he said. Gara looked back at the raccoon demon. Sure, he said and she wrapped him in a tight hug. There was a knock at the door and Naruto went to answer it. He found a brother and a sister looking for their little brother. Oh yeah, he is in the living room, he said as they walked around him. About five minutes later there was a scream and when Naruto ran in there he found Gara hugging his siblings. Naruto about fell out laughing at the expressions. End flashback Naruto smiled as he got information from one of his clones. As planned the Naruto clones had found Kakashi and gotten him to agree to teach the Chidori to him, this also meant that Sasuke would have to learn it as well but Naruto didn't mind. Another clone reported to have found the Toad Sanin and gotten him to train him easily. He had found out that the Sanin was in town and had also found out he knew the Rasengan. He wondered if he could get both attacks, this will work, he said quietly. As they all prepared to enter the forest, Anko threw the kanai at Naruto, instead of it cutting his cheek he appeared behind her and held the freshly thrown kanai to her neck. Feeling feisty now? He asked in her ear. She blinked, he was fast. She had noticed him move but hadn't noticed him appear behind her. She grinned, very good, she said and began to announce the rules of the second test. Naruto smiled at Gara. Try not to kill anyone if you don't have to, he said, and, to Gara's sibling's surprise, he nodded. As they talked, a man was thinking to himself, that boy may be just as good as the Uchiha, I will have to watch him too. When they entered the forest they were almost immediately attacked, this was with no warning but Naruto had felt them before they attacked. He jumped up and caught the first man by the foot before turning and bringing his weighted foot down onto the man's back. This sent them both into a quick sky dive into the ground. Naruto didn't find a scroll on that body so he went for the second guy moving through hand seals, fire style, phoenix flower jutsu. His eyes changed as he hit the man in the weak point at the bottom of his spine and caused him to drop quickly. Naruto wiped his hands as he lifted the scroll. Good now we have both scrolls, he said looking at Sasuke's and Sakura's astonished faces. Naruto grinned as it got dark. We need a place to sleep for tonight, he went through a couple hand seals and hit the ground at an angle, earth style. Cave creation jutsu, a small cave big enough for four people formed from the ground. Great job Naruto, Sakura said, but how do we stay hidden? Naruto grinned and went through another series of hand seals, genjutsu, hidden wall, the cave opening became closed. Naruto showed it was an illusion when he stepped through it. It worked because you could see through one side while the other looked like ordinary rock or a wall. He watched as they all went into the cave while he sat outside of it and meditated. Sasuke scoffed. What is that Dobi doing? He went. To grab Naruto before Q stopped him, he is training, Sakura looked confused. How is that training? She asked. Q sighed. He is training his mind and chakra. Naruto has achieved the skill of moving his chakra away from his body. Now he needs to make sure he can keep it moving in a controlled motion. They couldn't see it but Naruto's chakra was swirling around him in a spiral, it moved over the ground smoothly. He pressed it and it moved outward, covering the ground quickly. He noticed that his senses increased, it was like he was extending his body, he could feel everything, from the smallest ant to the largest animal. He looked to the left, there was something hidden there, it was large and scaly. Shit. He jumped out of the way as a giant snake lunged for him. He moved away from the camp, quickly dogging the snake before it vanished. What the? He looked around and extended his senses. The blonde looked down and found the mouth swallowing him whole. Naruto slid down its throat thinking, you want to eat something? He asked, 
eat this shadow clone jutsu? The snake expanded until it exploded, revealing a bloody Naruto. He spat a piece out of his mouth. He bit off more than he could chew, he grinned and began to walk back to the camp. While he walked his friends were having trouble of their own. Sasuke was being smacked around by a grass nin and Sakura was hurt, leaving Q to take care of her. Hidden beneath his guise, Orochimaru knocked the Uchiha away and looked around. Where is the little blonde brat? He thought, I am sure he is good enough to beat that low-class snake, I just needed him out of the way for a little. While he grinned and extended his neck and bit Sasuke on the neck, he set the scroll on fire and walked away, he will come to me for power, he thought before he was hit in the side of the head by a kick. Naruto stood a few feet from him and made a shadow clone, let's go, the rushed at him with a surprising amount of speed, he dodged and moved away to get some distance, that was before he heard a call from behind him coming from two people. Fire style, twin grand fireball, two giant fireballs rushed toward him. When he tried to dodge, two Naruto clones jumped up and held him as the fireballs encompassed them. The blonde boy grinned, got him, he said and blinked as Orochimaru stood up, shedding his burnt skin, no way. My turn, the snake Sanin said as he jumped toward Naruto and kicked him away, he coughed as he slammed into a tree. Damn that is one hard kick, he grunted as he was flung forward. As he flew he turned around and saw the Sanin stepping out of the tree. He growled low and remember his training to learn how to use Q's chakra. Flashback, Naruto, you must draw my chakra from the depths of your mind, Q said sitting away from him. He sighed and threw his hands up, I can't do it he said. The redhead hit him, Naruto-kun, you have to try, she said, try to find your way to do it. End flashback he sighed and placed his hands together, he closed his eyes only to open them wide as he figured out what to do, instead of looking for it, I should feel it, he expanded his chakra and pulled it into his body. He ignored the rush of his blood and the beat of his heart and went deeper into his subconscious. There is where he found it, the large source of chakra in his body, I will just draw a small bit, he said and pulled it out. His eyes turned red and he focused them on Orochimaru who was racing toward him. Naruto growled and rushed toward the snake master. You are not going to beat me, the man crowed, I am years your better, he dodged a swipe from Naruto's extended claws. Naruto grinned, it won't stop me from trying, he said and was knocked back. This boy was strong, terribly strong. He would prove to be an excellent ally if he joined him. The snake Sanin gave a mental sigh, he doubted this boy was as power crazed as his raven haired teammate and would never leave his village willingly. Guess I will just have to kill you then, he lunged forward and saw Naruto grinning, what are you so happy about, I am going to kill you. Naruto laughed, his clones had just dispersed themselves and he learned everything they did. He had an idea for a new jutsu. He created a clone and started to go through hand seals. When he finished he held his forearm and put his palm upwards, Chidori, he said and nodded to the clone and it began to rapidly move its hands above the Chidori, causing it to spin and twist, Rasengan. The two attacks melded and clashed and Naruto grunted with the effort of keeping it together. It is incomplete but I can perfect it later, he said, it will work just fine in this situation. He began to run forward, quickly picking up speed, when he reached Orochimaru he called out the name of the attack as he thrusted it into the Sanin's chest. Rasidori. The attack began to twist and pull at the man's chest as it bored into it, ripping it to pieces with both the forces of wind and lightning. The old ninja actually screamed in pain as the attack spun him counterclockwise, then sent him flying away at a speed near Lee's after activating four gates. Naruto groaned as he dropped to the ground. Naruto, Q said as she dropped next to him and held his head in her lap, are you okay? She asked. He held up his thumb, just a little. Exhausted, he said, that Rasidori sure takes a lot out of me. I'd say so, she said, you are glad it worked, if it had failed then it would have exploded on you. Naruto laughed, it almost did. He said, it was your chakra that kept it stable long enough for me to use it, he kissed her hand. She giggled and created a clone to help her carry him back to their cave. Sakura beamed when she saw them, Naruto, she said from her place taking care of Sasuke, that was amazing. Naruto nodded as much as he could as he was laid down, he quickly fell asleep. Q sighed softly, 
You really love him don't you? Sakura asked. Hugh smiled. Yeah, I have known him for as long as I have known him, she said. That is better than my stupid little crush on Sasuke. Sakura said sadly. He just ignores me all the time, and I guess I started liking him because all the other girls liked him. Q nodded. That is USU Sally how it starts, she smiled, but just keep working on him and I am sure he will return your feelings, she said getting the pink-headed girl to smile. Thanks Q, she said quietly. You are a good friend, the redhead nodded. I try to be, she said as they talked about what attracted them to their love interests. Q said it was Naruto's sweet attitude. Sakura said it was Sasuke's bad attitude. Q liked Naruto's bright blue eyes and his sun-kissed hair, his warm body as they lied together on the bed. This had Sakura blushing with embarrassment and anger. Sasuke actually had very little traits that were good for him, his hair was shaped like a duck's butt, his eyes were like two black coals. He was horrible to everyone because he thought he was better than them. None of the guys could see why the girls liked him, maybe it was some kind of girl's instinct that made them like to be treated badly. Maybe they thought they could change him. Only the maker of women could understand how they thought. The next morning found them peacefully walking into the tower, Sasuke had recovered with a small mark that looked like the marks in his sharingan. Naruto smiled when he saw his sand nin friends while Q went to hug her sister. Hello Naruto. Gara said as his new friend walked up, I trust you had no problems, Naruto laughed, a little battle, he grinned, and I won, he didn't say it was because Orochimaru had underestimated him, he guessed that if they ever fought again, the snake Sanin would rip him to pieces. Good, he said nodding at his blonde friend. Naruto smiled, so how are you and Shuki getting along, he asked, fairly well, came the reply. She is very forward, he said as said girl hugged him and kissed him on the cheek. Q shook her head in disbelief, her sister had gotten the almost emotionless sand nin to fall for her in two days. It had taken her to do it to Naruto four years. Naruto grabbed her and hugged her, looks like we both have girlfriends, he said smiling. Gara nodded. The third Hokage stepped up to address the group, he spoke of how there were quite a few extra people. They would be having preliminary battles to see who would go up to the third exam. Now would anyone like to drop out of the exam before we begin? He asked. Kabuto, as usual, gave up. You can hardly blame him, he is pretty much better than most elite ninja. Pitting himself against a bunch of genin sounded fine for him. But to do it during the exam would blow his cover. A few other people chose to quit too. All right, everyone pay attention, the proctor, Hayate, started the computer once everyone was up above the fighting ring, it spun. Through tons of names before landing on two, everyone gasped and Naruto grinned. The first battle is between, Hayate said, he held up his hand. Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto blinked and looked at Sasuke before looking at Q. I think we should be even, he said softly, after all. I am better than I used to be and he is supposed to be a prodigy. He frowned at the word. He had always hated it because people said it like anyone with that title was better than him. He disliked Sasuke the most though. The Uchiha was aloof, but not in the genius way. It was more like he believed everyone under him. Naruto wanted to take him down a few pegs. Though, knowing Sasuke, he wouldn't even notice that he was beaten, he would just pass it off as being lucky or maybe he would twist it around to him taking a dive to make himself feel stronger for letting someone weaker win. But to Naruto, Sasuke was just an ass, an ass that needed a good kick. With a smile on his face, he jumped down to the center of the arena and watched as Sasuke followed suit. Naruto saw Sasuke smirk as his eyes flashed red. The Sharingan, right, he copied Lee's style with that, Naruto frowned as he began to think of ways to stop Sasuke from using that cursed eye. He wouldn't be able to use his best jutsu for fear of it being copied. Hayate stepped up and held his arm up, ready, let the battle, begin, he brought his arm down and both Naruto and Sasuke vanished in an instant. Naruto knew that copying his own fighting style would do Sasuke no good so he stuck to that for now as he countered the blows Sasuke swung. He twisted his body in mid-air upward as Sasuke brought a round kick toward where his side had been. With a sharp kick downward, he sent the raven-haired boy downward. The blonde grinned and ran through hand seals, 
fire style, fireball jutsu, he fired a medium-sized ball of fire toward the grounded Sasuke. He saw the Uchiha's eyes widen at the sight of the attack before he was engulfed in flame. Grinning, Naruto landed 20 feet away from the area of impact. He felt a sense of alarm in the back of his head. It wasn't his own, he was feeling Q's alarm. He quickly leapt forward, narrowly avoiding a kick to the back of his head. Bringing down his foot, Sasuke glared at Naruto, the black tomo of his Sharingan spinning rapidly as he watched Naruto's every move. He was pissed and felt outrage that someone as low as Naruto could learn one of his family's jutsu. He felt the power come from the side of his neck and welcomed it. He would beat Naruto down. Naruto watched him, seeing the slightly crazed look in his eyes. He focused the red chakra to his eyes, enhancing their ability to see. Even from this distance, he could pick out skin cells, sweat, and the slowly growing cursed seal on Sasuke's neck. Things just got a lot more serious. If Sasuke was using the cursed seal this early, it could only mean that he was losing control of his anger. Naruto looked to Q for permission to use her power. She had once told him that there would be a time when he never needed to ask her for the power. A time when he could just tap into it at will and not be in danger of losing control of himself. While she was a calm and level-headed creature, it was her chakra that was the dangerous one, it was wild and unstable, tapping into Naruto's anger and beating at his will, it made him but a slave to his will if he let it, or if she did, but she would never let that happen. Of course, in the first few months of her capture, she had thought of forcing all of her chakra out into the boy to make him the monster the villagers feared. She knew that it served no purpose other than feeding her anger at being sealed into another body and had let her anger go. She knew what anger could do, so she kept a tight leash on her power and made sure Naruto didn't try to grab at it and accidentally use too much, she knew the dangers. Eventually, he would be able to handle more power, but for now, she only gave him enough to barely beat his opponent. The blonde boy smiled when he felt the familiar rush of chakra flow out from his chest. He felt the heightening of his senses, his teeth lengthening slightly and his fingernails becoming sharper. Q had once explained that the transformations he endured when he used her chakra were because they were the beginnings of him taking her form. Obviously, Naruto had freaked out about losing his body, but Q had reassured him that when he was able to fully control her chakra, he would be able to change from the Nine Tails form to his normal form at any time. He would even be able to use the forms between the two. A flash and the two figures struck each other. The other genin could only see blurs as the two fought. Even the older teachers had to focus to keep up with the speed the two used. To Naruto and Sasuke, everything was just moving slower as they threw, received, and dodged blows. Naruto could see that the curse seal had paused in its travel along Sasuke's neck. By looking into his eyes, Naruto could see that the raven-haired Uchiha was holding the cursed seal back by will alone. It was amazing how much of an iron will Sasuke had. Forming a single seal, Naruto created twenty clones to attack Sasuke while he formed his Rasengan. The Rasadori was still too unstable to use and Naruto had too much of Q's chakra rushing through his system to keep it in check. The Rasadori would explode in a second. Sasuke had easily dispatched his clones, but Naruto was ready with the Rasengan. It turned slowly purple as he infused it with Q's chakra. He rushed at the raven-haired boy preparing to shove the glowing ball directly into his chest. The blonde Jinchuriki had made sure that it would only wound, not kill. While Sasuke didn't know what jutsu Naruto had used, he knew enough not to let it hit him. Using his speed, he vanished and reappeared behind Naruto, striking out with a kick and feeling it connect. His eyes widened as the Naruto he kicked, exploded into a puff of smoke. A high-pitched whining filled his ears. He turned with a curse to find Naruto sliding up nearly under him. Rasengan. The blonde boy brought the sphere up and hit Sasuke in the gut, sending his rival spinning high into the air and slamming against the ceiling. Smirking, he looked at Hayate. I think this is over. He felt a wave of chakra from above him and looked up to see Sasuke's arm bubbling. The curse seal had suddenly spread faster when Sasuke was knocked unconscious. Without his will forcing it back, the seal took on a mind of its own, actually adapting to its host's will. With a lunge, Sasuke was thrown toward Naruto. 
Of course, this is the moment when Naruto's chakra had decided to taper out. Shit, Q cursed and vanished appearing in front of Naruto flying through a set of complicated hand seals stopping with her palms thrust out. Seal. Mist spun around them, blocking off the sight of everyone. Even the Hyuga couldn't see into the mist, when they looked it was like a void in the air, they tried to look in and instead they looked past. Inside of the mist two large clawed hands were holding the half-malformed Sasuke to the ground. Q seemed to be controlling the hands with her own. Sasuke struggled but couldn't move, whatever was holding him was incredibly powerful. She bit her lip and let the blood run, Naruto, I need you to preform a summoning jutsu for me okay? Naruto looked surprised but nodded, he had learned to not question Q when she was serious, normally she reminded him of a kind of fangirl, of course she wouldn't hesitate to beat him if he was rude, but most of the time she was fun and willing to goof off with him. He touched the blood on her lip and brushed it onto his hand before running through the seals and slamming his hand down. What appeared was a small green fox. It looked at Q and barked quietly. Naruto watched the two as they spoke in barks, growls, and yips. After a few minutes, the small fox ran over to Sasuke and examined the seal before suddenly biting him on the clean side of his neck. Spider web marks spun out and pushed the seal back into place and seemed to wrap around it. Suddenly, Sasuke's body went limp and Q smiled. Thanks, she said as the small fox poofed away. She looked at Naruto. That was a fox-style suppression seal. It will hold the curse seal back for a while, but it isn't permanent, she released Sasuke and the arms slowly dissipated. I will need to study it and learn the makings of the seal if I am going to get rid of it, or maybe I can change it into a useful mark instead of a dangerous one, she smiled and vanished as the mist did. Hayate looked surprised and walked over to check the raven-haired boy, who a few minutes ago had looked like a monster, he then looked at Naruto, the winner is Naruto Uzumaki, he said softly, he and everyone else were bewildered at what had just happened. One minute Sasuke turns into a monster and then Q jumps in, creates a mist and afterwards Sasuke looks normal. When Naruto returned to his team, they were tending to Sasuke, but he let them. Sasuke needed the attention. If he didn't get that seal worked on, he could become a liability. While Q was examining Sasuke, she looked at Naruto and smiled, blowing him a small kiss. Blushing, he turned to face several other people coming to bug him about the match. Lee wanted to fight him and acted as Lee does. Several of the actual L fighting girls wanted to know about his technique, and the guys wanted to know how he had improved so much since the academy. But even as he talked, Naruto thought about Orochimaru. There was a reason the Sanin was in the village, and it wasn't just to give Sasuke a freaky hickey. With a few goodbyes, he ran off to talk to the Hokage. They needed to be prepared for whatever Orochimaru had in store for them. Naruto sighed as he stood in front of the Hokage. He had constantly tried to explain that Orochimaru was back but the old man didn't want to believe him, he really couldn't believe that Naruto had defeated his old student. If he had to gauge his own power, he would say that the snake Sanin would be an even match against him. This was obviously just a cry for attention, he smiled at the young boy, now now Naruto, you don't need to make up stories about being able to beat a legendary Sanin, how would you even have harmed him? I told you, I used a technique I invented by combining the Chidori and Rasengan that I learned from Kakashi and Jiraiya, Naruto said exasperated. The Rasadori, Serutobi nodded. A very ingenious idea, but the two attacks would be very unstable and would require a lot of chakra, which I know you have, and a lot of control, which you haven't worked on. But I have, and yes the attack takes a large amount of control, but I had help controlling it, this caused Serutobi to raise an eyebrow. Who would be able to help you? He asked. Naruto looked around and then preformed a set of hand seals. Chakra rippled and a bubble of energy surrounded the two of them. The old man was surprised. That jutsu was specifically designed to ensure the privacy of the one who used it and one other person of the user's choice. Oddly enough, it had never been given a name. Perhaps the name itself was private? Naruto sat down. I used the Kyubi's chakra to contain the destructive energy inside of the attack, he said calmly. This gave Serutobi a start, really, I had no idea that you were so well in control of the fox's chakra, 
he said sitting up straighter. I'm not, the fox doesn't let me use too much in case I lose control and turn into a monster. The old Hokage was getting more and more surprised, you have spoken, with the fox Naruto? For the last four years, the blonde boy nodded, old man, if I tell you something you must swear under oath jutsu to never ever tell anyone without my permission. This was getting really serious, Sarutobi preformed the necessary hand seals as Naruto followed suit. When both stopped, they bit into their thumbs and let the blood drip onto the desk, mingling together. The blood glowed silver and then vanished. I accept the terms of the oath, the old man said, trusting the young boy. He had been with the boy for a long time and had come to see him as an adoptive grandson. Four years ago, I met a young red-headed girl with beautiful ruby eyes, the boy said softly, shortly after my apartment was burned down again. The Hokage nodded, I remember, that is when you showed up with that girl Q. Naruto nodded, well we became good friends, and shortly after our first mission I found out that she was the Kayubi no Kitsune. Sarutobi's eyes widened and his pipe fell to the ground, and Naruto, did you let her out? Naruto shook his head, no, her chakra body I guess, is still locked inside of me, but her mind and physical body are outside, forcing her to stay trapped in human form. He looked the old man in the eyes. Sarutobi, she is not evil, she can't remember why she attacked the village, but she is trying to make amends by being a powerful ninja for this village. The old man nodded, all right Naruto, I will trust you on this, he said firmly, I will believe that Orochimaru has returned, what do you think he plans to do? Naruto grinned, that is where my new friend comes in, he said softly, Gara no Sabaku is the container of the Shukaku. During the first exam Q and I worked to fix his seal and that in turn allowed a physical form of the raccoon demon to enter our world, same as Q. Because of this, he is helping us. The old man couldn't help but chuckle, so that is that young girl who has been stuck on the boy, and he seems happier for it as well. The blonde nodded, well Gara told me about the Sand's plan to invade Konoha and I believe that Orochimaru has something to do with it, there is no reason for a village, who we have good relations with, to suddenly want to attack us. And the only one to actually get an invasion planned and set up would be the K's cage, it can't be, could it? The Hokage asked. Naruto shrugged, possibly, either the K's cage is working with the Sanin, or the more plausible assumption is that Orochimaru killed the K's cage and took his place in order to come here for the exams to both get Sasuke and destroy Konoha. The two grinned at each other, Naruto I will get everything prepared in secret, Orochimaru won't catch us with our pants down, he patted the boy on his shoulder, now, let's head back to the arena, the second battle will begin soon, thankfully I was able to call a break after your battle to get everything settled down. The next battle was between Kiba and Kin. The girl's sound abilities were killer on the boy's enhanced hearing. Unluckily for her, she underestimated the boy's dog, thinking of the little puppy as nothing. More than a pet, she hadn't even been paying attention and didn't notice a second Kiba slam into her with a suga, knocking her out cold. Luckily for her, Kiba was a softy on girls and tended to hold back a certain amount of strength depending on what he gauged during the fight. His dog followed his example and did the same thing. So instead of the attack completely cleaving her in half, it only broke four or five of her ribs. Thank God for medic ninjas. The third battle was between Shikamaru and the male sound ninja with the metal arm, Dosu. It was a poor grouping. The sound ninja needed to get close to the lazy ninja to use the full effects of his jutsu and Shikamaru was a long-distance fighter. All he had to do was get the other ninja close enough and then trapped him in a shadow possession jutsu. By reaching into his own pouch, he pulled out a plastic kanai, while his enemy pulled out a real one. The battle ended in the sound ninja giving up before the shadow user made him cut his own throat. Hanada was pitted against Neji in the next match. Despite still getting beaten, she actually did some damage to Neji. The young man had barely been able to prevent her from striking his heart point, deflecting it and causing her to strike his stomach point instead. This had the bad effect of giving him a terrible upset stomach resulting in vomiting and diarrhea. Naruto had laughed his ass off when Neji embarrassed himself in the middle of the arena. The other battles were fairly simple. Zaku vs. 
Shino, Tamari vs. Tenten, Kakuro vs. Surugu, Sakura and Ino fought Gara and Rock Lee respectively. Both gave up at the very beginning of the battle. Sakura gave up when Gara's sand surrounded her and held her tightly, he wouldn't have crushed her, not anymore anyway. Ino gave up when she couldn't even find Lee he was so fast, when he did stop, he broke off a piece of the arena floor and crushed it in his bare fist, he didn't want to beat up a girl who couldn't even defend herself. Lee may act a little overboard, but he is a gentleman through and through. Choji fought Akato Yoroi and easily beat him, the guy couldn't get a good grip on him to drain the chubby kid's chakra. Once Choji used his meat tank ability, he completely flattened the chakra drainer. After that they had two months to train. Gara and Naruto were constantly out training with Kyu and Shuki. Kyu and Shuki took this time to teach the two boys about combination attacks. The two quickly got the hang of it and found a way to combine their two attacks. When Gara created certain weapons such as the sand shuriken, Naruto could use fire techniques to superheat the sand and turn them into glass shurikens. Once they hit, or were blocked, they would shatter and change the terrain into a dangerous spot. Another set of training was Gara learning how to use Shukaku's chakra. Despite popular belief, when using it, Gara didn't take the form of a sand raccoon, it was interesting. Gara's change was similar to Naruto's, Gara's eyes would change to take the form of Shukaku's and his body would be surrounded by a golden-colored aura. His teeth would elongate and the permanent rings around his eyes would grow outward slightly before dipping down to touch his upper lip. At the point when Gara was able to train while using the chakra, Naruto joined him and they sparred. They didn't use any ninjutsu or genjutsu, only taijutsu, it completely leveled the training ground they were in. Gara was also taught both the Chidori and Rasengan and was currently learning the Rasidori. With the red-headed boy's help, Naruto was quickly perfecting the Jutsu. When they didn't train, usually when they were resting and eating ramen they talked about their lives. The day before the third part of the Chunin exam, Naruto and Gara were talking about ways to beat Orochimaru. Naruto grinned at his friend. See, we want to catch him by surprise, so it is good that we interrupt the first battle as fast as we can. The blonde boy had been thinking of this for a while now. The only way he had beaten Orochimaru the first time was by catching him by surprise. Gara nodded, quietly slurping his noodles, with the Hokage able to help us it should work, he stopped and looked at his blonde friend. Naruto, I know, get ready to move on my mark. Go, they both moved and caught the two girls jumping at them and pinning them down, tickling them like crazy, making them giggle uncontrollably. Teach you two to try to sneak up on us, Naruto laughed as he tickled a squirming Q. His eyes were changed into their bloodline form, showing him the perfect spots to tickle Q. He saw something odd and used his chakra to touch one of the ethereal tails that waved behind her and she slumped in his arms, moaning softly. Gara blinked, what did you just do, Naruto quickly explained his bloodline and found that Gara knew how to do it too, apparently it was a Jinchuriki thing, Naruto guessed that it only activated once only the chakra existed inside of the Jinchuriki's body. Gara's eyes changed to look like Naruto's only with Shukaku's eyes instead and found the same thing as Q but with Shuki having only one thick raccoon tail, he used his own chakra to touch it and caused the girl to slump and moan before she sat up and kissed Gara deeply. Naruto laughed before Q followed suit. The rest of that afternoon was spent with the four kissing their respective loves. The next morning Naruto sat up and yawned opening his mouth wide, he looked around and found that the other three people were gone. After their long makeout session they had retired home and just goofed off enjoying their night of relaxation. Now though, it was time to get serious. He got dressed, making sure to leave his weights off, today was going to be dangerous. Once he was dressed he closed his eyes and tried to sense Q, he found her near the arena for the third exam. He sighed, she is really eager to get started, he chuckled, she must really not like Orochimaru, I wonder if it is a deeper problem. Stretching, he headed out toward the arena, it was time to ruin Orochimaru's plans. A plan well thought out when Naruto reached the arena, he smiled, seeing Kyu and Shuki giggling together as they talked. Gara was leaning against the wall, watching the two as well. He turned to look at Naruto and smiled a little, Naruto, 
Nice of you to join us, he said, it seems our girls are plotting against us for after the exam. The blonde made a face, let's hope it is something good, he said, usually, when Q is planning something, it is usually a way to get me to eat healthier or train my mind, with them both, I have no idea what they could be scheming up. Especially with Shuki sharing new ideas with her, the redhead said chuckling softly as he looked at the two girls before turning back to his friend, I talked to the sand nin and explained the situation, at first they were upset, understandable seeing as their cage was killed, but I was able to calm them down and work out a plan, he grinned, they are subduing the sound nin even as we speak, he looked thoughtful and pulled out a scroll, handing it to Naruto. With Shuki's help, I was also able to dig up some information on Orochimaru's sound 4, that guy Kabuto was speaking with them, Gara shook his head, they have plans of their own, specifically to separate the Hokage from everyone else with a barrier to let Orochimaru kill him. Naruto read the scroll. There wasn't much, these guys kept their skills hidden. The names were there though and an estimate of their physical abilities based on observation. He frowned, we should take them out methodically, starting with the weakest member. An attractive hand reached down and tapped the picture of the girl named Tiyuya, she is their weak link, not an ability, but in her mind. Naruto and Gara both flinched when they realized that Kyu and Shuki were next to them. They hadn't even noticed them walk up. Kyu giggled and pulled her hand back. The blonde shook his head, how do you know that, he asked. Her eyes looked sad, she said softly, if you can capture her, I can rehabilitate her using a few techniques I know. Gara raised an eyebrow, torture techniques? He asked, I didn't think you would use them? She shook her head, no, it is a fox thing. She grinned, we are naturally likable, which means that I can get her to open up. Her boyfriend nodded, I suppose I can send some clones after her. According to this scroll, she goes off on her own every day around this time. He preformed the seal and created eight clones who all rushed off. He sighed thoughtfully, I hope I can catch her by. Surprise, my clones will alert me when they've got her and you can go to get to work, if you can make an ally out of her, then that would be great. She nodded before they heard a loud ringing, looks like it is. Starting, she hugged Naruto and kissed him softly, Shuki and I will. Go find our seats, she hugged Gara before standing back so Shuki could talk to him. The raccoon demon stepped up to Gara and hugged him, remember, do your best and be careful. Any demon's power is addictive if you use it too many times without proper preparations. Gara gave her a small smile and kissed her forehead. I know, he said softly. He wasn't completely cured of his murderous tendencies, though he was getting better. Without the tainted Shukaku in his mind, he was able to think clearly, as well as sleep properly. It also helped that Shuki was by his side. She was the contrast to the voice that had been in his head his entire life. She kept him calm and assured him everything was going to be all right. Hurry up or you aren't going to get a good seat, he said. She laughed and kissed him quickly before running off with Q. Naruto chuckled and stepped up to Gara. Our girls are amazing, are they not? He asked with a smirk. How did the two of us get two of the nine most powerful beings in the world to fall for us? Gara grinned. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it was my good looks and wonderful personality that got Shuki. The blonde looked at him and laughed, punching him in the shoulder. You are full of it, I think we just got lucky when they were sealed into us, he noticed that Gara had applied his sand armor again, most likely for the battle ahead. The redhead hit him back, it might be more than that, after all, they were sealed into other people before us and even though Shuki was corrupted, Q had no reason to find someone else. I already asked her about that, apparently, before me, she was only sealed into women, he sighed, he had asked about his parents, but Q had told him it wasn't the right time to talk about them yet. Gara nodded, I've heard that women are stronger in will than men, he grinned, so either you have to have a strong will to not lose control to the chakra coming from the demon, or be favored by her. Naruto laughed, hey, we both have strong wills, it comes from the conviction we have to protect those we love, he held his hand out to Gara. Let's hope we can fight each other, see how strong our convictions are. Gara took his hand and shook it firmly, I look forward to it, they both turned and headed into the stadium.
As they walked, they could hear the sound of the people talking as everyone found their seats. Everyone sounded excited for the matches to come. They should be after all, this was a battle between the best of the genin. It was a test to see how much a village had grown. If they could train their genin to be strong ninja, then it would mean well for the future of the village and other alliances. There was no point in having weak allies. Naruto thought that was the dumbest thing he had heard. Even the weakest could give aid. With help, the weakest could get strong, but it seemed that everyone wanted nothing but strength for themselves. With that mindset, no one would be strong. He smiled and played good little ninja though, as they walked into the arena, he couldn't change anything if he stayed a genin. He needed to further his rank and eventually become Hokage. It is easier to make even steps forwards, than one giant leap across a chasm. Looking up into the stands, he noticed that Kakashi and Sasuke weren't around. He assumed that they were off training. He shook his head. He knew that Kakashi was better suited as a teacher for Sasuke than he was for Naruto, but he still could have bothered to show up, if to do nothing other than give support. The blonde boy found that he and Gara were the last to arrive. Gara patted his shoulder as he walked over to join his siblings. Naruto grinned when he noticed that the girl, Tamari was sending looks toward Shikamaru. She was a tomboy type, but it was still obvious to tell that she was interested in the lazy genin. Naruto had pressured Gara into pushing her toward Shikamaru, especially after Shuki had gotten the blonde girl to talk about it. It was still a fragile thing though. This was a girl whose youngest brother was the holder of a demon. Dating had to be difficult for her, any interest a guy might show in her was quickly squashed by fear of her brother. Naruto turned his eyes from them to look at the other participants, along with Shikamaru was Choji, eating something as always. He knew that the Akamichi clan ate a lot to use the calories for their body growth jutsu, but he wished that the boy would eat healthier food, and he didn't miss the irony in that thought. Naruto chuckled, thinking of the fact that Kyu was very adamant about him eating healthy. Kiba and Shino looked as if they were arguing about something, at least Kiba was. It was hard to tell what Shino was thinking. From what Kiba was saying though, Shino had criticized the boy's fighting style, thinking it wasn't very effective once the opponent was able to get rid of the smoke that was needed for his and Akamaru's surprise attacks. He left them to it and looked toward Lee, who was walking towards him, looking happy as usual, behind him, Neji was looking stoic as always and stuck up looking. But that was the way most of the Hyuga looked, excluding Hanada. His thoughts were interrupted when the green-clad boy wrapped him in a big hug, which he returned with just as much force. How are you doing Lee? He asked, I hope Neji hasn't been giving you too much. Trouble, the boy laughed as he let him go, no, he is the same as always, but he seems pretty mellowed after Hanada almost beat him. Naruto grinned, yeah, she was pretty awesome wasn't she, sure had her own flames of youth burning at the time. Lee gave a fist pump, of course, her sensei is the youthful Kurenai. Yeah, I am hoping that Kurenai helps Hanada shed her shell a little bit, she is a pretty girl and can be a beautiful woman if she doesn't lock herself away. The blonde smiled at his friend, behind that quiet exterior is a very strong girl. The black-haired boy was about to say something before the proctor appeared in the center of the arena, calling for everyone's attention. Surprisingly, everyone quieted down quickly as the ten of them stepped up. As this was going on, Q and Shuki were watching intently. Q smiled and looked at Hanata and Sakura who were sitting next to them. So, who are you two rooting for? she asked. Naruto of course, Sakura said grinning, he is my teammate and a good friend, of course I would be here to support him. Hanada nodded, my team and Naruto, she said softly, I know one of them has to lose, but I wish they didn't have to. Shuki giggled, Hanada, you are too kind for your own good, people are going to walk all over you if you don't get tougher. The girl in question nodded, I know, Hughes told me that before, I am trying, but it is hard to fight against your nature she smiled a little at them. The pink-haired girl next to her blinked and put an arm around her. Well, you don't have to do it alone, as girls have to stick together, she looked over her shoulder to Eno who was sitting behind them. Right? The blonde laughed, of course, who else is going to put these boys in their places? Hanada laughed a little at that then looked forward when the proctor raised his hand to announce the first match. 
The first match is between Tamari no Sabaku and Shikamaru Nara, the man said loudly, making sure everyone heard him, the other contestants must leave the field. Q giggled, Naruto looks a bit disappointed that he wasn't picked first to fight, she grinned, his three top choices were Neji, Lee, and Gara. Shuki giggled, Gara is feeling the same way, though it is hard to tell, he is good at hiding his emotions unconsciously, she smirked, he can't hide them from me though. Ino leaned over next to the girl, I still want to hear how you hooked him so easily, he is more closed off than Sasuke. Sakura nodded, I agree, it is so interesting that he just lets you love on him so unconditionally. The raccoon demon giggled and shook her head, you just have to know your man well enough, she said, I've known him a while, practically since he was a baby, the official story that they were telling everyone, was that Shuki was a friend of Gara's who had come with the siblings to support him, but it was only recently that their feelings had emerged. Unfortunately, there was no way to get the information through. Tamari and Konkuro, so they just told the truth, after binding them with a jutsu to make sure they didn't spill the beans. Surprisingly, the two were fine with it. They appreciated the change in their brother because it was for the better. They stopped their conversation as a large gust of wind shot through the stadium. Many people were almost blown out of their seats, though the two demons seemed to be able to stand it just fine. Tamari had tried to blow Shikamaru against the wall to knock him out but the boy was smarter than the lazy way he acted and had hidden behind a tree, adopting his thinking pose. The pink-haired girl next to them scoffed, how can he just sit there and take a nap or whatever it is he is doing, shouldn't he fight? Back, there was a sound of agreement from Eno, Q grinned, because he is lazy, but he is also a smart kid and he knows not to just rush into something, she shook her head, he is very thoughtful but Tamari is smart too, you see she is staying out in the open and far enough away from him that his shadow can't reach her. Shuki nodded, yeah, if he tries to get closer to catch her with his shadow, she will just beat him down with her wind, but this works both ways, she can't get closer either. The two seemed to be having fun as they bounced ideas off of each other, picking out ways they would both defend and attack each other if they were the two. In the end it was obvious that, despite giving up, Shikamaru was the victor. He had used the growing sun to extend his shadow around the arena and behind Tamari, using a second shadow to force her back a little, into the range of the first shadow. There, he caught her and could have easily taken her out, but instead, he gave up, claiming that it would be too much of a bother to continue on, especially since he knew he would have to fight the three main hitters. Naruto, in his spot, was disappointed that the battle hadn't been more action-filled, but admired the way Shikamaru had handled the battle. He knew that the old man would recommend him for Chunin. The lazy boy was an incredible strategist. The blonde was smart because Q had beat it into him, and without that knowledge, Naruto would have been nothing but a brawler, a type of fighter who would just rush in head first without regard for himself. Shikamaru wasn't that type of person. From what he could see, the boy could think at least 200 moves ahead and even plan for what his opponent would do. He shook both of their hands as they came back up, though Tamari looked very confused, Naruto nudged Shikamaru towards her. Girls don't like it when they are handed something that they worked hard for. The boy sighed but nodded, yeah, I know, I was hoping that someone wouldn't notice or wouldn't mention it. Naruto chuckled. Yeah, I am sure a lot of people noticed, at least the good ninjas. Shikamaru gave a small chuckle and nodded. All right, I'll talk to her. He made a small face. What a drag. He walked over to Tamari, fully ready to explain why he had given the fight to her. Naruto knew of course. It was obvious, even if the boy was good at hiding it, he was exhausted. His family jutsu took up too much chakra, which is why his shadow had a limit any further beyond that point and it would suck his chakra right out of him. Now if Shikamaru had been able to use Naruto's near inexhaustible source of chakra, then he could have been able to extend his shadow across the entirety of Konoha and still had plenty of chakra to use. He turned back to look out as the proctor stepped up to announce the next battle. An interesting twist brought Shino and Kiba out to fight. It would be a sight to see as Kiba was still fuming from his argument with Shino before. Naruto could already see where this was going. Kiba was being too hot-headed and would rush right in with Akamaru. Shino, being the smart guy that he was, would use that to his advantage. 
Akamaru was strong, but he was still a puppy, he would also use that. Once he took Akamaru out, he would be able to fuel Kiba's anger and make him even more irrational as well as cut his power by half. He would be able to use his bugs on Kiba, along with Kiba's wild attacks, they would drain him of his chakra. And that is exactly what happened. Naruto knew that this would put Kiba's outlook in perspective. He would have to improve his fighting style, though he would probably still be upset with Shino for a while. Once Shino and Kiba left the area, the proctor appeared again and announced the third match, giving Naruto a big shock. It was Neji versus Lee. It was an incredible thought, both of them were strong and Naruto couldn't think of who would be the winner. It was likely that they would end up knocking each other out. But no matter what, Naruto was rooting for Lee. Especially once Neji began to talk about it being fate deciding the battle between him and his teammate. Naruto rolled his eyes and shouted out, interrupting Neji's tirade. You would have said the same thing if any of us fought you, go ahead Lee, show him that hard work can beat fate, of course he had gotten caught up in the moment, he understood that, while he didn't do it. Openly like Lee, Neji did train hard, but all that crap about fate really got on your nerves. Neji gave him a cold glare which Naruto just shrugged off and grinned back, giving the long-haired boy his best, come and get me, look. A large boom along with a cloud of dust broke their little staring contest as Lee took off his weights, having received permission to do so if he fought someone he deemed too strong to fight with weights. Then the fight began as Lee rushed forward to attack. Neji activated his Byakugan as he moved and aimed for Lee's left arm to immobilize it, but Lee was ready and flipped over him. Naruto had gotten Q to get Hanada to train with them, getting her to use her Jukin on them so they could fight against it. Lee especially had paid attention, he wasn't looking for weaknesses, just ways to keep from getting hit. Apparently, his training paid off, if the way he dodged Neji's attack or Neji's growing annoyed look, had any indication. But Lee couldn't land a solid hit either, it was exciting yes, but the two of them were just parrying and dodging attacks. Obviously, Lee knew this and began to speed up, pushing Neji back, but Neji was not to be outdone. His hands flew, speeding up as he pushed himself, eventually striking Lee's side and halting his attack. The spandex-clad boy jumped back, sliding across the ground. It seemed the two were taking a second to catch their breath and plan. Naruto watched Lee check his side, but it seemed that Neji hadn't hit any vital areas. Lee slid into his battle stance once again, preparing himself for more of Neji's attacks. The white-eyed boy rushed forward, dropping down a second before he reached Lee, trying to get under his guard. Lee's fist flashed as he struck downward, blocking the incoming blow as his other first came within inches of Neji's face. The boy barely had time to move out of the way, but Lee didn't give him any headway, pushing him back with a flurry of punches and kicks. Konoha whirlwind, the boy shouted as he spun, striking Neji's arms as he tried to block, sending him sliding back. It was pretty obvious that the two were evenly matched. Lee looked up into the stands at his teacher with a silent question. Guy gave a single nod and Lee smirked hopping back from a blow Neji had thrown at him, thinking he'd been distracted. Lee brought his hands to his side and felt the growth of power shoot through him, first gate, open, Lee's hair stood up and his skin turned red as the ground around him seemed to crack, a testament to his power. Neji had a flash of surprise cross his face before it became determined, he would beat Lee and put him in his place, he rushed forward but blinked as Lee vanished from his forward vision. Thankfully, he could see in almost all directions and was able to barely dodge the kick that moved the air around, creating a strong breeze. He turned to strike at Lee back, but the boy was already gone, aiming a strike to his abdomen, he moved to dodge once again when the strike changed. Lee vanishing once again, and hit him in his solar plexus, sending him careening away from the powerful taijutsu user. Lee didn't even give him a chance to move, appearing above him, his elbow slamming down onto Neji's back, knocking him into the ground, breaking the surface. He stood there, waiting for Neji to move before the proctor came over to check the long-haired boy's status before standing up. Neji Hayuga is unable to battle, Rock Lee wins. Naruto clapped and cheered for his friend as a pair of medics came to retrieve Neji. Looking toward the stands, he saw a look of anger appear on Hiyashi's face and sighed, looking toward Q, sending her a mental message to keep an eye on Hiyashi. 
The man was bound to do something with his anger and it wasn't a positive thing. Shaking his head, he turned back to the arena, wanting to see the next battle and hoping that it was his and Gara's. He was eager to test his strength against the other boy. But alas, it was not to be. It was Konkuro and Choji's fight next. Naruto could already see who was going to win. Gara had informed him of his sibling's skills. Choji would have stood a chance if he'd trained more instead of eating. If he'd actually worked hard, he could be a powerful ninja. So instead of watching the fight he turned and slowly sat down, closing his eyes to meditate. Considering the number of final contestants, he and Gara were next to battle. With that thought, his mind slowly fading until he was alone. It was quiet here, he hadn't been back inside of his mind in years, too busy with Q to be bothered to try. The first time he'd done it, Q had been teaching him about meditation when he'd suddenly appeared inside of a large sewer-like hallway. He'd followed the pipes to a room with a large cage, but before he could get close, Q had pulled him back, telling him to be careful with how deep he went into his own mind. Now, he knew she was just protecting him from knowing the truth about her. Since he already knew who she was, he didn't have to worry about exploring his mind. As he opened his eyes in his mindscape, he noticed the difference from before. First off, there was no constant dripping of water, which he still hadn't figured out what the heck that was all about. The second difference was that he was standing in a pristine white hallway. Touching the walls proved that they were very smooth, almost like silk. The floor was like marble. It was looking down that gave him a big surprise. He wasn't wearing the clothes he had been wearing outside of his mind. He was wearing a black velvet suit with a white tie and matching pants and shoes. There was a single red line that ran down the center of the tie. Checking under the collar of the suit and saw that he was also wearing a white button-down shirt. Oddly enough, he liked it. It made him feel snazzy. He tapped his feet on the marble floor a little before he stuck his hands into his pockets and began to walk down the hallway. The hallway felt endless, which was odd considering that he had a vague memory of other hallways. He stopped and looked at the wall. This is my mind, he said softly as he reached forward, pretending to grab a doorknob. Like magic, a door formed in front of him, the doorknob under his fingers. He grinned and slowly opened it, the door swinging inward silently. The room it opened into was dark and probably would have been as silent as the hallway if it hadn't been for the deep breathing that came from it. He quietly walked in and held his hand above his head, whispering the word light. A small ball of light appeared above his hand and floated there. In the light, he was suddenly face to face with a large face. He stumbled back a little, seeing the dark closed eyes and the black nose. So that is what her true form is, he said softly, thinking of Q. She'd explained this too. She had two forms, her physical form was split into chakra and conscience. So you had Q and the Kyubi. Q was the physical, conscious form that he spent time with. The form he was seeing was her unconscious, chakra form. It was incredible. That form was incredible. No wonder so many people had been scared of her. Looking around the room, he could see the tails that seemed to wrap around the edges of the room. The blonde walked forward and placed his hand against her nose. It was cold and wet like a dog's, though the breath that came out was hot and smelled like the physical form of Q. He chuckled, adorable, he said, and incredible destructive. Dot and this is only half of her power. Q had also explained that she was missing half of her power and didn't know where it had gone. It hadn't been destroyed though, she could still feel it. Naruto of course had told her that he was going to find it for her once he got a chance. Giving her a small scratch above her nose, he turned and walked out, shutting the door quietly. He shook his head. Ammo to make her blush, he said as the door vanished. He thought of opening a different door and one appeared. This door was made of a dark wood, feeling like mahogany. When he opened it, he was pleasantly surprised to find that it was a library. A large soft couch was sitting in the center, in front of a fireplace, a deep brown table sitting in between the two. Under the table and couch was a large red and yellow rug, intricate designs running across the rug. The floor was wooden, but didn't creak under his feet as he walked in. It was comfortably warm as he looked around at the books that covered the walls. He noticed that there were also scrolls around the books and blinked as he picked one up and opened it, he laughed. The scrolls were jutsu, some of them ones he had never seen. Enjoying yourself Naruto? 
a voice asked from behind him, causing him to whip around and look toward the voice, he smiled when he saw Q standing there, large fox ears twitching on top of her head and her nine tails flowing behind her. She was wearing an ocean blue dress that went down to her heels. She giggled when she saw him staring, come on, don't stare, it is embarrassing. Ah, I am sorry, he said walking over to her, what are you doing here, I thought that this was my mind. She nodded, it is and it isn't, this is the seal, it is what binds our two minds together. She pointed towards the door he'd come in. Next to his door was another door that showed a deep red hallway. He grinned and turned back to her, well, this is cool, I didn't know that we could spend time with each other in our minds. Well if you'd asked, I would have told you, she giggled and turned away from him. Oh no, don't try that on me, you were supposed to be my teacher with all of this stuff, why would I ask you about it? He stepped up and grabbed her, lifting her a little and causing her to squeal. All right all right, I am sorry, now put me down, she laughed and eeped as she was dropped onto the couch before he leapt after her, pinning her to the couch and kissing her softly. She gave a soft moan before placing her hands against his chest and giving him a playful shove. Don't start something you can't finish, she said teasingly. The blonde grinned and slowly sat up, maybe after the whole Orochimaru stuff, he said as she sat up with him, smiling as she scooted onto his lap, letting him hold her. Yeah, oh, Choji's doing pretty well in his fight, she said smiling, he is actually able to keep up with Konkuro. Naruto laughed, well that is good. Sounds like he's actually been training a little more than we thought. She nodded, that is good, though he is going to lose, he is starting to lose stamina, she smiled, this fight is going to put some perspective in him, make him work harder. He nodded and blinked, wait, how do you know what is going on outside of our minds? I have been at this stuff a bit longer than you Naruto, she said, doing this is like making a clone. I could feel you enter this place and was able to make a copy of myself in here, though I am still connected to what is going on outside. He looked a bit confused but nodded anyway, she blinked and nodded, looks like he was just beaten, poisoned by Konkuro's puppet, though Konkuro generously used a lesser poison as it just knocked him out. She smiled, you becoming friends with Gara has had a big effect on the world, I believe if you hadn't affected Gara, Choji would be dead now. Suddenly, she hopped up and grabbed him, pulling him up with her, come on, the proctor is beginning to introduce you and Gara, and you don't want to miss your entrance. She pushed him toward the door, now go, I will see you later. He stole a kiss before he shut the door, a second later, he left his mind, opening his eyes and shooting up and over the wall to drop into the arena. He saw that Gara was already there, giving him an amused look, fall asleep Naruto, he asked. The blonde chuckled, nah, just meditating and lost track of time, he looked at the proctor, let's start, I am eager to test my strength. The proctor nodded, the battle between Naruto Uzumaki and Gara no Sabaku, begin, he jumped away, barely able to get away before Naruto and Gara began their fight. The people in the stands were surprised, thinking that Lee and Neji's fight had been high speed, the two ninja in the arena were just a blur of kicks and punches. It was odd that Gara wasn't using his sand, everyone having learned about his fighting style. He wasn't supposed to be a very good taijutsu user, relying on his sand to do the brunt of his damage. But from the way he was fighting, he could stand up to Lee in a brawl. They leapt away from each other, their fingers flying through the same seals before taking a breath. Katen, Hozenka no Jutsu, they both shouted, shooting fireballs at one another the balls so well aimed that they met in mid-air, exploding with a burst of heat. The cork popped out of Gara's gourd as sand flew out, sand style, crushing tanuki, the sand formed into a large tanuki and charged Naruto down. The blonde laughed, oh, that is new, he said grinning as he focused his chakra into his fist, slamming it down onto the tanuki's head, sending the sand flying before he kicked back away as the sand raced towards him, aiming to pierce him. As he hopped away, he went through another set of seals before he hit the ground, digging in and sending a pulse of chakra through his feet. Earth style. Shattering ground. Jagged rocks of earth grew from that impact, pushing the sand back, forcing Gara to dodge as it slammed into the arena wall. Naruto whistled when he saw that the wall only had a minimal damage, tough stuff, he said as he dodged a group of sand shuriken as they passed by his face, 
He vanished as he created clones, the clones charging Gara. The redhead looked around, trying to find out which one was the real Naruto. His sand swiped at the clones, causing them to disperse before his eyes widened, hearing the a powerful whining from behind him. Rasengan. Naruto shouted as he slammed the spinning ball into the sand user's back, blinking when his body exploded into sand. A sand clone. He gasped as the sand wrapped around him, encasing him. Sand coffin. Suffocating womb, he began to tighten his hand, cutting off Naruto's air supply. Inside the darkness of the coffin, Naruto growled, I can't believe I was pulled into his trap like that. He closed his eyes and grinned. Gara is good, he said softly as red chakra began to flow from him. His eyes snapped open, showing the red slits of his demonic eyes. Let's up the ante, he forced his chakra out, causing the coffin to start bulging. Gara frowned when he saw this happening. Oh this is not going to be good, he could feel Naruto's demonic energy starting to flow out. He began to focus, his own golden chakra starting to flow from him, his eyes changing into the star shape of Shukaku. The blonde boy exploded from the sand, his fist extended. Gara countered easily, their fists meeting in an explosion of power-filled air. The normal citizens couldn't even see the two after that, just feel the power of each blow as they fought at high speeds. The shinobi of the village were amazed at the speed of these genin and their great strength. Then, something interesting happened. Both just stopped their fight, the sudden breaking causing the ground under them to crack. They were both grinning at each other. It seemed that they were talking about something before they both vanished again. Then it changed as the two appeared in the Hokage's booth, both slamming their fists into the now vacant seat of the case cage. The Hokage had already followed after the retreating man. Naruto smirked and looked at Gara. let's go, they both followed after the two. When they reached the top of the building, a giant purple barrier had already been erected. Naruto looked at the redhead, get into position, we are going to deal with this quickly, make sure Q and Shuki are ready. His friend nodded and jumped away as Naruto watched the battle between the Hokage and the revealed Orochimaru. It seemed that Orochimaru had some extra sound ninja hidden away, but that battle was quickly going south as the sand ninja joined the shinobi of Konoha to fight them off. Q had told him to wait until Orochimaru preformed a specific jutsu, it was one she'd seen before and had a plan to subvert it and turn it against. He blinked as two coffins emerged in front of the snake sanin, with a third on the way, but Serutobi was able to stop it before it fully returned. Now, Naruto shouted as one of the corners of the barrier fell apart, destroying the barrier easily. Tuyuya was standing there grinning and gave Naruto a thumbs up before she jumped away to join the fight against the sound nin. At the same time, Gara, Hyu, and Shuki appeared behind the other three ninja who'd been in charge of sustaining the barrier. Gara and Shuki trapped two of them in sand coffins while Q simply did something to put the last member in a daze before she jumped forward, moving past Orochimaru who still hadn't realized that he'd lost his barrier and had been introducing the two men he'd summoned forth. Q pulled out two kanai with tags on the end and shoved them into the back of the men's heads, shouting out, you are free. The result was incredible. Orochimaru didn't stand a chance against the three Hokage. While Serutobi brought out his summon and launched forward, the other two cut off the snake Sanin's retreat, keeping him against the ropes. The next part was a flurry of jutsu, the three knocking Orochimaru around like a rag doll. By the end of it, Orochimaru was struggling to get up when Naruto and Kyu walked up to the beaten down Sanin. Q bit her thumb and began to go the summoning seals before bringing out a fox. The long-haired man gave a low growl, what are you going to do, he said softly as he pushed himself up. She grinned, you see, I reversed engineered the seal you put on Sasuke and was able to perfect the reversing when I visited Tuyuya. She patted the fox's head. My little friend here is very good at doing the jutsu I have told him on a much grander scale. She nodded to the fox and he stepped up standing on his hind paws as he began to go through a series of complicated seals. You want to be immortal, Q said softly, immortality comes at a price. The fox finally finished his seals and brought his paw down onto the man's forehead. There was a sudden crack of energy as black seals began to race across the ground and under his paw. Fox seal reverse. Damnation of the mind, 
Orochimaru gave one small shout before his eyes rolled into his head and he passed out. The fox vanished, leaving a single paw-shaped seal on his forehead. Sarutobi blinked, what did you do to him, he asked softly. Q sighed, it was him who did it, all of the seals he ever placed on anyone were pulled back, the sudden influx of chakra and power crushed his will, now he is nothing more than a doll. She looked toward the two undead Hokage, thank you for aiding us in our fight, she said giving them a small bow. Hashirama nodded and gave her a bow in return, thank you for giving us the chance to fight. Naruto looked at them, how do we send them back, he asked, knowing it was unnatural to have the dead alive again. His red-headed girlfriend smiled, leave that to me, I had a little bit of extra added to the seal that was put on Orochimaru, she snapped her fingers, reverse the Edo Tensai, she commanded. Sudden, the man sat up, though his stare was blank, yes, he said softly and went through the seals in an automatic motion. The two Hokage nodded and turned to ash as the real bodies of the ninja fell to the ground. She looked toward the third, I figured he could still be useful, he will tell you anything you want to know, right Orochimaru? The man gave a single nod and she smiled, good boy, now, you are to follow Sarutobi's commands. Sarutobi coughed a little as the man nodded again, a hey, alright Orochimaru, I command you to go with these two men and wait for me to come interview you, do not answer anyone's questions. The two Anbu stepped up and took the Sanin by the arms before they vanished before more Anbu showed up, all right men, let's get this mess cleaned up, and no one is to speak of this. He looked at Naruto, Hugh, Shuki and Gara. you four, I will speak to you tomorrow, after I have dealt with the results of this invasion, they nodded and jumped away, most likely to make sure nothing had been damaged. A giant snake had slammed through the wall after all. He sighed and turned, getting ready to head back to the Hokage Tower as he rubbed his face, I am getting too old for this. He grinned, it is time I named a successor, and I know exactly who I want, no matter what she says, the end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.